ideally, every government ascends the throne of governance with its priority programs and agenda. However, irrespective of priorities of any government, the need for a strong and resilient fiscal and monetary mechanism cannot be overemphasized. It was in the quest to attain this that in Nigeria, the federal government came up with various reform initiatives. Expectedly, this had included public finance reform. Now, what does this entail? And how has it contributed in the pursuance of government's priority programs and agenda? To help us make a sense of this all, my guest on Rahma at two today is Kano Bourne, graduate of accountancy from Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, Masters in Business Administration from Bayero University, and another master's degree in international affairs and diplomacy, also from ABU Zaria. In the course of his work experience, my guests have traversed several MDAs and the private sector. He's a fellow of professional bodies, which includes Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, Chartered Institute of Cost Management of Nigeria, but to mention just a few. My guest has attended numerous professional courses, seminars, and conferences in Nigeria and beyond, aside a numerous credit of professional publications. Malam Ahmad Idris, Accountant General of the Federation, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, presenter. Thank you very much for having me on the program, sir. Thank you. Sir, your personality is synonymous to Nigeria's independence, yet you still are looking agile and very vibrant. Can you share the secret with us, sir? Um, thank you very much for the uh, encomiums and the introduction. Um, the secret of uh, being healthy, the secret of being, you know, active, we thank God Almighty. It is by, by his bounty, by his uh, blessing that all these are achieved. And uh, more importantly, like I said, we give glory to Almighty Allah for keeping us alive, keeping us uh, healthy, and keeping us alive to our responsibilities, both official, social, personal, and uh, extended family, and so on. That's nice, sir. So, uh, viewers, remember that you can send your comments or questions on Facebook and Twitter at Rahma Television and on WhatsApp on 0809-3601-775. So let's get to business, sir. Since assumption of office, you have introduced various financial reform initiatives. Can you take us through some of them and perhaps share their benefits as it relates to the Nigerian economy, sir? <coughs> Thank you very much. The Office of Accountant General of the Federation, the Treasury of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Treasury of the Federation, um, is the heartbeat of the economy, is the heartbeat of the public financial management, is the heartbeat of the entire Nigerian system. We are so because we manage resources of the nation. We provide liquidity for the system. We effect, uh, you know, oversight on public finance, public finance management as a whole, particularly at the federal level, and to a large extent, even to the entire federation. And when I say the entire federation, I'm talking of the states and the local governments. Our function traverses the federal, state, and local governments. And uh, in due course, I'll give you details. But coming particularly to the question about reform initiatives, um, the key reform initiatives that we drive include the Treasury Single Account, the TSA, the uh, um, international public sector accounting standards implementation, uh, information personnel cost uh, management, IPPIS, 
which is a platform for payment of salaries, uh, the GPMIS system, audit modernization, and a host of others. Um, so in a nutshell, coming to the benefits, the TSA is meant simply to ensure aggregation, to ensure visibility of revenue, to ensure that a single window, a single dashboard is provided to view resources of government, funds available to provide services, to provide capital uh, projects, to provide, you know, to do all manners of things as required by, by, by the people and as enshrined in the uh, budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we have largely achieved um, TSA uh, policy, you know, by way of implementation. Um, yes, there were issues, there were difficulties and challenges. I, 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 think, I think, sir, uh, in, uh, in due course, we'll, go, we'll take this uh, initiative okay. one after the other All right. in um, a more detailed form. But okay. in the meantime, you will agree with me that in order to ensure compliance, the sort of initiatives you have enumerated will obviously require uh, decisive, consistent and focused monitoring. So how have you had to go about this? We, we have a mechanism in our system. The Treasury as an institution has um, recognized departments, specialized departments, key departments that are meant to provide oversight on implementation of some of these reform initiatives. For instance, we have the uh, audit monitoring uh, department. That department uh, like I've just said in a, an interview recently granted, uh, we undergo what I call audit, audit modernization. Audit modernization connotes um, computerization of audit process, um, dig digitalizing it, making it, you know, to be far away from what it used to be, the analog way of doing audit the manual audit. We've uh, established an audit lab, lab, lab with computers, with systems, and it is entirely, completely web-based. And uh, staff have been trained. First of all, our own staff, uh, which I call train the trainer. And these people are now training other staff from other MDAs. All these are on this new zeal to do audit through the system, to do audit, um, you know, from the comfort of the office. Yeah. You can audit an MDA, which is far away, going through the system because you will have visibility uh, of their pattern of expenditure, what they, uh, you know, budgeted, the budget lines, the expenditure lines and you can see clearly um, is it consistent with their provisions in, the, in, the, in, in their budgets. Mm -hmm. So that is one, one aspect of it. But we may take it further from time to time to visit the MDA physically because there may be need to check and cross-check documents. For instance, the physical sighting of a voucher and so on. Uh, so, unless with that, you know, unless under those exceptional conditions and circumstances, audit is now done through the system, uh, is web-based, and is real-time online. So, um, uh, there is also, <laughs> sorry, yeah. the inspectorate department, which is a separate department from audit monitoring, that is also from time to time particularly quarterly, uh, it goes uh, to you know, MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies to check their records, their vouchers, their receipts, their revenue books, and so on, and to ensure compliance with the laid down rules and regulations, particularly relevant provisions of the financial regulations, the extent rules, and then the public uh, 
um, uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act, which largely is talking about how revenues should be accrued, I mean, should accrue, and how they should be accounted for, and how, you know, they should be applied. Yeah. yeah. So, um, more specifically now, <laughs> since April 20, uh, 2007, mm -hmm. the Integrated Personnel Payroll Information System, popularly known as the IPPIS, IPPIS yes. yeah, has been in implementation. So, to what extent would you tell us that uh, the objective of the IPPIS uh, has so far been achieved? The objective has been achieved, and um, we are not completely um, there as envisaged, but I can tell you in terms of capturing ministries, departments, and agencies, we've been able to capture about 60 to 65 percent. We, we've successfully captured mostly the civil servants. So all ministries, departments, and agencies, you know, that you may term civil service, are largely on the, on, on the IPPS platform. We have recently um, brought on board the Nigerian police, the entire, you know, Nigerian police force. We have also successfully brought in um, the paramilitary, the civil defense, the um, immigration, the prison service, the federal uh, fire service, and you know, so all these have been brought on board, and we have worked assiduously, uh, a line consistent with the directive of the federal government, or in particular the cons I mean directive of Mr. President, that even the military should be brought onto the platform. We have done biometric capture, and from this month, I'm glad to inform the public that the military will be paid salary on IPPIS platform. These are some of the achievements. There are still um, institutions, namely the universities, the polytechnics, where uh, some level of resistance, you know, is being played. But we are talking to them, engaging them, telling them that, look, it is in their best interest and uh, they should also support us to be transparent and accountable. And they should support us um, to, to ensure that these reform initiatives uh, are, are, are achieved, are instituted. Because if universities and polytechnics kick against reform, I mean, it will sound strange. These are centers of learning, centers of new ideas, centers of research, centers of development, and they are always prone to welcome new ideas. So why this one? Um, so we see no reason. It is looking ionic. It is looking strange that universities and polytechnics, some of them anyway, because some have already given us their uh, nominal roles, and uh, we are working uh, to, to, to bring them on board. And we pray and hope that the rest that have not responded will respond because there is a deadline within which if uh, they don't comply, certainly they will not be paid salary. Now, even though you've mentioned the fact that uh, a deadline it does exist, perhaps as a way of uh, further motivating or perhaps uh, encouraging, for instance, the tertiary institutions that are yet to come on board the IPPIs, uh, can you, on a, uh, on a, uh, in a more specific term now, tell us specifically how has government, the civil and public servants, benefited from the IPPIS? The benefits are obvious. Whenever a reform is brought, it is meant to achieve efficiency. It is meant to achieve effectiveness. And will you say effectiveness is, and efficiency has been achieved so far? They are being achieved. We pay salaries promptly. There is a standing instruction to pay salary on or before 25th of every month. Most of the time, we achieve that. And it is in the best interest of the federal government employees, the civil servants, and the workers to be paid salary promptly. That is a major achievement. Secondly, it has brought about a, um, transparency. If at all, there are issues. When we, use, you know, we were giving monies to the MDS to pay the salaries, first of all, we notice the budgets, in some cases, have been inflated. 
And nobody at the end of the year comes to say, look, this is the balance. Take it back to chest. So we have to remove that. We have to stop that. It is, it is, it is illegal. It, would, it is not the best that the economy should be, should be facing. And we have successfully reduced that for all the MDS that we brought. And that is why we made uh, some savings. We recorded savings. In 2017, we recorded savings of about 63 billion. 2018, about 106 billion. And 2019, about 80 billion is being projected. So you can see, ordinarily, if we didn't bring this on board, the monies would have been given, and nobody will come and tell you, uh, here we have surplus, take it back to government. No, they disappear. And that has to stop. Perhaps, Look, perhaps the federal government is fighting corruption. Yeah. And we have to fight corruption and be transparent in all flanks, in all directions. Because it can, corruption can manifest in various forms. I am not saying um, uh, universities are corrupt or institutions are corrupt. Whatever it, that means, all I know is that I've made saving. It's not recovery. Let me be quick to tell you. Mm. Recovery is when somebody takes money and you take it back. But in this case, the money is not taken. It is in the system. And that in itself is better for the economy, is better for Nigerian people, because there will be resources for government to deliver social goods around education, around healthcare, around name it. I think for better understanding and assimilation of our low learned um, audiences, mm. I, I want to believe that they would, they would have begun to wonder. You are uh, mentioning the fact that between 60 and 100 billion has been saved on See, annual basis yes. as a result of the implementation of the IPPIS. Yes. So one would wonder, 60 up to 100 billion captured in the budget, but at the point of uh, expenditure, mm. the, no, no claims, have, uh, uh, legitimate claims is being put uh, across for you it. You see, that, that, that is the beauty of the IPPS platform. We centralize everything. It is now done through the Office of Accountant General. There is a complete, full-fledged department. And say these savings are obvious. The facts and figures are there. And in, in, in the past, nobody came back to say, look, I have made savings and take back the money. No. And that is the first beauty. That is the first advantage to the economy, to government, and to the people of Nigeria. Well, you're watching Rahma Atu, and my guest today in the pro, uh, on the program is... Um, Al Haji Ahmad Idris, who is the Accountant General of the Federation in Nigeria. We are discussing a whole lot of issues that has to do with the ongoing financial reforms in Nigeria. There's more to come. In the meantime, uh, let's now take a look at uh, a component of uh, specifically financial aspects of the overall economic reform being directly championed by your office. This time I'm talking about the TSE. What does it even stand for? Now, the TSA, like I told you in the opening remark, is meant to achieve central control, central visibility, central management, centralization of resources of government, central, you know, common dashboard through which at any given time you can say this is what government has in terms of resources. Okay. Let me use the, 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 the uh, common man's word in terms of availability of money. Monies money belonging, to the, belonging to the federal government. In this case, federal government. Mm. You must be uh, aware that state governments, local governments are independent. And we implemented TSA at federal level even though most states have now take, you know, em are emulating, are coming also to, to do the same. But their own is different from ours to the extent that they are not linked. State resources are state resources. Federal resources are federal resources. And we've been able to do away with 
things which were so inimical to the economy. We have saved on a monthly basis 4.5 billion Naira, which ordinarily, before implementation of TSA, were spent in managing over 40,000 accounts spread all over deposit money banks, commercial banks. Mm. Now, all these accounts are with Central Bank of Nigeria, and there are no charges. Central Bank of Nigeria doesn't charge us for keeping an account. Yes. So what you keep is what you take. What you keep is what you, yeah. And therefore, this is a big plus. That is also saving. Remember, if on a monthly basis, every month, 4.5 billion naira would be spent per annum, it will amount to what? Well, and for all these years since we started TSE, it would have amounted to what? These are the savings, and it has helped us to have resources available and to deliver on certain uh, areas of need, particularly, you know, capital projects. You will agree with me that since the last four or five years of this administration, a lot of capital projects were executed all over the Federation, all over. The railway came on board. Our roads are being everywhere. No zone of this country is not witnessing one project or the other. Major project. The airport is being uh, rehabilitated and be made modern. A lot of things are going on. Yes, we borrow to execute part of the capital, but our resources also have helped us to, to do some of these things. Now, you have enumerated quite a lot of achievements of the TSA, yes. uh, 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 impact, the positive impacts of the TSA mm. on the national uh, economy. Uh, popular programs like this, especially considering the ba lots of back and forth, rantings and naggings that uh, it has uh, experienced, couldn't have come without a challenge. Can you share some of those challenges? The challenges are largely um, around uh, resistance by key players the MDAs, the institutions, you know, they, they, they never wanted to leave the old ways of doing things. Uh, they wanted business to continue as usual. And TSA has come to bring about transparency, you know, um, clarity in the inflow of revenue, and, you know, a, you know, full accounting of such revenues. And, uh, you know, adherence to the laid down rules what I may call rules of engagement or rules for engagement mm -hmm. the, 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 the physical responsibility act is very paramount in this regard it specifies how much of the revenue an MDA can generate and um, what part of that revenue the N MDA can spend no rule the law the rule, the act, never allows MDA to generate all the revenues and spend it. And that is why I'm now, I need to tell you, each MDA at the beginning of the year makes budget, specifying their projected revenue and projected expenditure. And they cannot operate outside that. Any attempt to operate outside that is illegal, and they stand to be sanctioned. And so TSA has brought all this clarity. And uh, in terms of revenue generation, in terms of inflows, in terms of visibility, in terms of accounting, everything is now clearer, more efficient, more effective, better than it used to be. Yeah. Of recent, we are reliably informed that um, some African countries were in Nigeria to understudy the TSA. What has been the role of the OAGF in trying to empower them? With that, that again is, is coming to reenact the beauty, the beauty of all these reform initiatives that you know Nigerian government has imbibed and is implementing. Um, if your neighbor is trying to copy you, it means you are doing something good. 
when you see your neighbor copying you, certainly it's not something that, that is wrong or bad. What I'm trying to say is Nigeria is now becoming a role model in, in, in South African continent. And countries are coming to identify with Nigeria to copy, to take capacity, to be trained, and to go and implement the same thing. And that can also uh, confirm that we allow falling in line with global best practices. What is best in America should be best in Nigeria. And some of these reform initiatives are global. They have global perspective. They have global um, acceptance. And if you want to be there, you just need to follow a line, uh, put necessary mechanism. It's not just about rhetorics. It's not about talking. You must put institutions, clear institutions, personnel, infrastructure to attend some of these reform initiatives. And Nigeria has done that. Nigeria has done that successfully with all these areas I've mentioned. The GIPMIS implementation, IFSAS implementation, TSA, IPPIS, and a host of others. To the extent that other countries are now coming to copy the model, implementation model that will be adopted and which has proved successful for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's true, Gambia came, uh, two other countries um, have written, uh, they are willing to take our personnel to stay there and put them through. And so if, if, if that is the case, then we are now becoming a mirror for Africa, at least Africa. And we can now rub shoulders with some of these big economies that also are implementing the same initiatives. Yeah. Can we begin, we, can we be safe to say that uh, uh, powered by the in, uh, reforms uh, that uh, the OAGF is a uh, champion in Nigeria can boldly call itself the giant of Africa in financial management and fiscal policies right now? I, 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 will, be, I will not be wrong to say that because um, we are the strongest economy, the best economy in Africa so far by records, followed by, is it uh, South Africa? or Egypt, go to these countries where we are, they are not yet there. They are not yet there. So it's not just by coincidence, by accident. It's by design, and these are some of the parameters and indices. Even, uh, you know, the, the, the international partners consider a rating and economy. Yeah. They are, they are looking at these standards. Mm. It is either you have you have it, they see it, or you don't have it, they see nothing. So you have you seem you sound you sound so passionate about this government integrated financial management information system they give me. Can you give us a little more highlight on it? This is um, expenditure and budget execution platform. First of all, it also has components uh, to do with human resource uh, management. There is also procurement and stores management. It's, it's a holistic, robust um, platform and system that integrate all these functions. Some of the functionalities, like expenditure and budget uh, execution, have already been deployed. And uh, we are trying to integrate it with IPPIS. The human resource model is now being worked out. The Office of the Head of Service of the Federation is working on that regard because it is human resource it's their own uh, within their own far view and so we are gradually implementing it and um, it is a very robust system and it will bring about the much needed e efficiency and control and you know uh, even in terms of performance management individual staff performance management it has you know a, an, an aspect of it as part of the human resource uh, function uh, that deals with that. So um, it's, it's a thing that we should do, and we are doing it um, with all the vigor, and we are being supported by government. Of course, if the political will is not there, we can't fly. After all, there was attempt to do TSA before the you know, emergence of Buhari administration. It couldn't fly because there was no will. Now the will is manifested, is, is there, is demonstrated. 
And we are there as foot soldiers to take it to the level that is required. All right. The Office of uh, the Accountant General of the Federation has a mandate for audit monitoring. How has this helped in uh, activities of the MDAs in Nigeria? See, there must be check and balance in any system. If you want efficiency in any system, provide for check and balance. Do not allow a situation where um, a particular function is started and taken to the end by an individual. In other words, somebody must initiate a transaction. A request must be made. And then the request must be justified. And it must be consistent with the need of the organization. Again, it must be part of what is contained in the budget of the organization. Of course, it's part of the consistent consist consistency with the need of the organization. Aside of that, it must be justified. Justified in terms of cost. Is it what the organization can afford? Again, coming back to, is it within its budget limits? How is that need competing with other needs in the organization? Because the organizational needs can vary. It can be from this department, that department, this unit, that division. All these sometimes are varying needs. And sometimes they can even be competing needs. So which one do you pick? Now, having picked the most appropriate need to meet, the accounting officer now approves. Approval of the accounting officer means begin the process to procure or to buy or to engage somebody to deliver that particular need. If it is a service, if it is a repair, if it is a building, if it is construction, all these depending on the nature of the need. Now, somebody again has to, the procurement process is there. You can't just by mere approval as head of department or a head of accounts go and say, okay, let me bring my brother or my sister to supply. No, no, no. There is a procurement procedure depending on the threshold, depending on the amount. So the aggregation of all these processes means that along the line, there may be deviation from the, 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 the laid down procedure. There may be. I use the word may be. And so if it is so, there is also the need for somebody who is independent to come and check. Has the processes gone in line you know, with the laid down rules? Answering all these questions I've been asking. And that function is that of the auditor. And that is why we have audit monitoring department that goes to MDAs at random from time to time, visit them, put questions on their expenditure pattern, on their spendings, on their revenues, on their compliance, and where they deviate, we draw their attention and put some corrective measures. And when we make next visit, we insist that what we corrected, let us see what have you taken? What measures have you taken to ensure correction of those previous uh, defects as observed? So it's not about um, castigation. No, 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 no. It's just to correct and to ensure that all is well. And when you are dealing with public money, you can't just deal, it, deal with it the way you want. You, you, you should deal with it based on the laid down rules and regulations. That is the essence of audit. And that is what they do and what we do. In summary, audit is not meant to blackmail, to castigate, or to indict. No, no, no. Indictment and qualification of audit report is where it is necessary. Where obviously uh, public funds have been jeopardized. Mm. Yeah. And so there is, is the, the auditor has responsibility to say it as it is and to give the facts and then report accordingly. So finally, before we get to um, 
uh, begin to entertain the questions that uh, Nigerians have sent uh, to, uh, into the program via the social media. You, in the course of trying to explain uh, the various directorates, departments per se, that uh, uh, the Office of the Accountant General uses to pursue its core mandate. Uh, you've not mentioned one that tickles our fancy right in here, possibly it's because it's our own. One would wonder, media and public relations directorate in the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, how, how does this directorate contribute in the pursuance of the core mandates of the OAGF? The media and public relations department is one of the service departments. And uh, I must commend them because they create awareness. All that we do, including our publications, remember, I must um, tell you that we do a lot of publications. For all these reform initiatives, we produce guidelines. We produce pamphlets on frequently asked questions and answers. We produce you know, uh, additional um, information for guidance of the public on each of these reform initiatives, the TSA, the IFSAS implementation, the IPPS uh, project, the JIPMIS, all of them, including revenue and investment activities. There are pamphlets and booklets. We also produce a um, magazine, quarterly magazine, highly educative, enriching, and you know, qualitative in content. And all these are meant to enlighten the public, researchers, students, financial managers, public financial uh, analysts, and so on, and anybody who cares about activities of the Treasury. Remember, I must tell you, we are for the Federation, not just federal government. We are for the Federation. So by extension, our relationship even with the states, subnationals, the state governments and the local governments, uh, is also enumerated in some of these uh, publications. Coming to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the press and uh, public relations department, it's a very vibrant department. Even this engagement with Rahama was anchored by, by that department. And so you can see they are doing a fantastic job. They enlighten, and all our press releases are issued by them, as agreed and signed and approved. Most of my activities, other, you know, those who visit me in the office on Kasi visit, my visits outside, are covered by, 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 by that uh, unit, I mean division, is headed by a deputy director. And so they are doing a fantastic job. And they are also the ears and eyes, because certain things we don't hear, quickly they hear, they see. They analyze all media um, publications every, on daily basis, bring out issues relevant to our core mandate and where we need to take for active you know, measures on certain national issues. We, we, you know, they give us details and we, we strategize and respond accordingly, even before, for actively, before a question is raised on us. So they also engage um, a lot of uh, NGOs and individuals, particularly those coming uh, with requests bordering on um, freedom of information because there is an act. But then, in giving uh, information, we need to weigh which one is critical to national security because there are certain information you dare not give because it will go direct on the issue bordering on national security. Would I safely call them classified information? Classified information. All right, let's take a look yeah. at uh, what Nigerians are saying on Facebook right now. I start with um, Mujahid Awal Ahmad. Uh, he says, please ask uh, the Accountant General about the autonomy, financial autonomy of local governments and when is the local government uh, going to begin to benefit the, uh, from the new law, from the Federation account? There is a presidential uh, directive and a committee 
was constituted by Mr. President to look into autonomy, autonomy of um, state legislature and by extension local government because what is good for <laughs> the legislature at state level is equally good for the local government. That committee um, is headed by uh, the then um, presidential advisor on Senate, Senator Eta Enang. I'm a member. We produced an interim report. There are certain things that have been concluded and their final report will be submitted. But there was a report to government and uh, you know a very clear um, firm position will be will be coming i don't want to preempt the the entire process but i know government will take a position on that and we are in support of uh, autonomy to not just the local government including the state legislature they should have financial autonomy and if you want independence of an institution, you should give it autonomy. And this is constitutional provision. It's not anybody's creation. It's not Mr. President's creation. It is enshrined in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President wants the constitution simply to be made to work with respect to these autonomies of local government and uh, uh, state legislature. So. It is something that is coming on board, and we believe it will come up soon. All right, just before we round up, uh, we have, uh, we'll take this one, it's so interesting. It's coming in from Abdullahi Garba, we saw Abdullah on uh, Facebook, and he says, um, what is the economic impact of uh, value-added tax VAT on Nigeria's economic development? Maybe he's asking this question because of the recent increase from 5 to 7.5 percent. Um, you see, uh, there is what is known as, um, you know, tax to GDP ratio, VAT to GDP ratio. In, in, in Africa, to the best of my knowledge, Nigeria has the lowest rate of VAT. Some countries like Ghana have more than 20%. There are some countries with about 30% VAT rate of VAT. Nigeria is just 5%. Uh, we have issues, serious issues around revenue inflow. Let me make a simple analysis. To fund activities of government, to fund services, to keep government going, you must identify clear source of revenue. Your revenue can be, as, you know, as a result of extract, extractive effort. In this case, like mining, like oil exploration. You take raw commodities and sell to global space and make income, which Nigeria you know, for long has been relying on and nobody cared about other sources of revenue. Your revenue can be from taxes. That again, because of our reliance on oil revenue that was coming in large <laughs> quantity, we ignored that. You can also fund national activities through borrowing. You can borrow internally, you can borrow externally. But the issue about borrowing is that there is a limit. You cannot continue to borrow perpetually because borrowing is not free. You must pay. It's just like postponing an evil day because what you will make in future is what you are now saying, look, Whatever I make is an obligation. You must pay <laughs> for your debt first before you come to even drink water. That is the agreement. Now, which option do we as Nigerians want? To continue to plunge this country into debt 
No, certainly no. No Nigerian, all of us, we want to be free. We want our sons and daughters and the generations yet unborn to be free of any debt in the next 50, 70, 30 years, possibly when all of us might not be there. We want them to have freedom. We, want, we don't want to you know, put them in debt bondage. So we shouldn't be borrowing. In any case, borrowing cannot be perpetual, and there is a limit for borrowing. Now, do we have control over prices of oil? No. Because the oil price or prices have come down, and we don't have control, <laughs> we can't force international market to be for price of oil. So we must do, make do with whatever is available, whatever is coming. Now, which one is the next option? Taxation. I've told you we are the lowest in terms of rates of taxes. And these taxes, greater part of it will go to states. Federal government takes about, not up to 20%. Yeah. I don't think about, I don't, uh, I don't have the rate, but about, uh, about 18 or so percent of whatever is collected. Mm. State government take greater part, a local government. And that's where the needs of the people are. Of course, federal government has responsibility to provide for security, for this, for that, as contained in the exclusive list, as provided in the constitution. Increase of VAT rate from 5% to 7.5% is not on everything. Food items, common food items, which are consumed by me and you and common people, are exempted. Um, drugs, medicine, drugs are exempted. And a host of other things which common people you know, use the list is even being increased, the exemption list. So that's the best option. And we need to take this step, and we want Nigerians to understand it is in the best interest of the economy, in their own best interest. And these monies will not go to federal government. Largely, it will go to states and local governments. And expectedly, it should be used for the common good of the people. Like I said, hospitals, schools, you know, roads, provision of water, provision of market space, and so on, to create more economic, I mean, favorable economic atmosphere, to do business at local level. So Nigerians should have this understanding, and it is the best thing that can happen now, so that we don't mortgage our future since we don't have control over price of oil. Perhaps as your parting shot, um, the current federal government came in the second, its second tenure to consolidate on the successes and achievements of its first tenure. From the office of the, uh, of the AGF, we had the GIFMIS, we had the IPPIS expanded capture, we had the TSA even with the back and forth conversation around it, but then numerous achievements as enumerated by you. What next should Nigerians expect from the OAGF? Um, we will continue to discharge our responsibilities to the Federation. Um, I told you we are the heartbeat of the nation. And that is why possibly you are calling me for this interview now, because of course there are challenges around revenue, challenges around you know, this or that. All, everything will come down to spending. I said it even in churches and mosques, no matter what happened, matters will come down to payment of, you know, using money to do one thing or the other. So we are at, you know, the focal point. You know, every eyes are on us. Of course, we cannot produce magic, but then we are doing our best and we'll continue to do our best. Whatever we do is being appreciated by state governments. They come up to us. On IFSA's implementation, there are committees. 
on I, um, IPPIS, some of them are also coming to adopt it. TSA, Kaduna State, I think even Kano State. Lately, I had Imo State and so on. Lagos State was already there. So we, 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 we expect to do more. And Nigerians should see uh, the Treasury as a very critical partner in the Nigerian project. And we assure them of our com commitment and continued zeal for transparency, accountability. And all this, I believe, will uh, translate and uh, give us the much needed arena for good governance that we are all yearning for and uh, where society will be better for it, Nigerians will be better for it, and they will see more in terms, in terms of projects, implementation, and so on. We will continue to support and provide liquidity. When I say liquidity, let somebody not misunderstand me. I'm not a bank, but we will make releases for projects to be executed. On that note, uh, Malam Ahmed Idris, FCNA Accountant General of the Federation, we would like to thank you humbly for making our time to be on Rahama at 2 today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. On um, final note, um, I appreciate this invitation and I look forward to more of it. And I'm willing to always come and shed light and inform Nigerians on all the, the, the those things we do uh, as part of the reform initiatives and to inform Nigerians about the Treasury as a whole, our relationship with states, our relationship with the local government, and our relationships with everybody that has business with the Treasury. Once again, I thank you for this opportunity. Well, remember, this is uh, about the size of the program today. But remember, in case you missed the show, uh, the show in part or perhaps as a whole, you, would, uh, you could always uh, visit the YouTube and our website for a playback. And uh, we would appreciate if you keep the conversation going on our various social media platforms. On this note, thank you most sincerely for the consistent trust and patronage. Bye-bye.